Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 4 Training Part 22. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our injection timing, as well as several other miscellaneous tables. We're going to have a lot to learn, so let's get started. Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our injection timing we're going to be working with in our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So the injection timing is going to be when we want to spray our fuel into the engine in relation to our crankshaft degrees, also taking into account our intake valve opening and our exhaust valve closing. These are all going to be critical factors of when we get the fuel into the engine. If we spray our fuel against a closed valve, we're going to be essentially wasting fuel. We want to spray it against an open intake valve, and we don't want to spray it against an open exhaust valve. That's going to be dumping the fuel out of the engine. So there's going to be a precise timing or a precise window we want to go ahead and accomplish our fuel getting into the engine, and that's what our injection timing is going to allow us to do. Now we're gonna cover this extensively in the video, so it's gonna make a lot of sense, and what you need to look for, and how you need to modify the tables if you've installed an upgraded camshaft in your engine. Without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at our injection timing on our GM Gen 4 ECMs. We're gonna also take a look at some other injector data that we have not covered yet. Let's move into our example I have open here. It's gonna be a 2010 Chevy Camaro E38 ECM type. Now, if we move into our engine, we go from our general to idle to airflow to fuel. We're going to be taking a look under here under injector control. If we move down our column here, we're going to find several tables at the bottom that we have not talked about, and they're very important in what they do. So we've already covered our flow rate data, the minimum pulse width, the offset data, and the short pulse adder. These are all have been covered in our previous training courses. So let's move down here now, taking a look at our cylinder gain first. Looking here at our injector gain, we can find we have a toggle to turn it on or off disabled or enabled. Now, if we enable it, we'll find that this table here, gain versus cylinder, is gonna be able to be used. And if we look at the values in here, we're seeing cylinder A through H. So it's gonna be representing our cylinders one through eight. And we see we have this gain value. It's gonna be set at 1.0. Now, 1.0 gain is gonna be having no offset modifier, no multiplying effect. If we change the numbers here to something like 0.9, it's gonna be taking 10% out in fuel globally on that cylinder. If we add a value of 1.1, that's going to be multiplying by 10% on that particular cylinder and adding it overall or globally. So our injector pulse width on this particular cylinder would change if we're changing, let's say, cylinder A here. So if you do this and you use this at some operating systems, you'll have instability with your fuel calculations at high RPM. It will uh, definitely cause problems. I've tried to implement this before on some engines, and I have not done it successfully. So it is here. Be aware that you can do that but I definitely recommend that you keep it disabled. And you'll find that most all operating systems will have it set here to disable. Let's go ahead and close that. All right, so the next parameter we're gonna take a look at here is our deset mode. We can find here it's gonna be set to enable, and I highly recommend you disable this. What's gonna happen is under full throttle conditions, if you're driving and you're in power enrichment, and you're commanding your EQ ratio under power enrichment for let's just say 12 to one air fuel on the gas scale. So if you're, tuned your mass airflow curve and you've tuned your volumetric efficiency table properly, you're going to be hitting that required or desired air fuel. So we've asked for 12 to 1 air fuel, we've represented our air mass in the mass airflow sensor curve or in the VE curve, and we're hitting that air fuel. All of a sudden you start to go lean and you take a look through your data log and you see your injector pulse width starts to drop out, gets lower, delivering less fuel. And then it randomly will start to come back uh, and, and increase the injector pulse with you, you go back to hitting the air fuel that you previously were commanding in the power enrichment. And it's uh, definitely very confusing, definitely very frustrating. And we'll find that this desoot mode is the contributing factor here. Now, the operating